Happy New Year, everyone. We are so glad that you're here, and what a great decision that you've made today. And this is decisions. The reason I just said word decision, because most people are hoping to get a better life, and they're hoping that they have a greater year. But most, most people are just wishing like a birthday party, blowing out candles, and just hoping that the fairy dust lands on you. But that's not how you succeed in life. That's not how you become a strong man or woman of God. That's not how you become victorious. How you do it is making right decisions. Say with me, make right decisions. Now, right decisions um, and doing right decisions, and maybe you never heard of this, is called wisdom. Wisdom is not just knowing what to do. Because if you know what to do and then you don't do it, the Bible calls you a fool. The Bible says that, but those that know how, what to do and then do it, God calls them wise. And it's the wise that become successful. It's the wise that end up getting breakthroughs. It's the wise that end up getting the results that they were always looking for. Is anybody ready to get some new results by applying and start making good decisions? And I'm just saying that because today you've made a great decision to start off your year here in the house of God. And I want you to do this. Continue making right decisions all year long. Why not make a commitment to go to church the whole year? We got 50 more weeks. And this is how you do it. Your level, your level of breakthrough, your level of growth is going to be in direct correlation to your level of commitment. Stop thinking you're going to get a great life with minimum commitment. You understand that? So what I want is great results, but I knew this. I need to be willing to give some great commitment. And you'll never, you'll never do more than you're doing until you commit to it. You got to commit to your future. You got to put God on your calendar. Why not put God on your calendar? Aren't you tired of getting your results? Come on, wouldn't you love to get God's results in your relationships, in your life, in your future? I mean, God's results. That is a choice, though. But you've made that choice today. And I would even recommend get a journal, get a daily planner, and then just literally go in there and just put one Sunday at the time. It says, from here, 50, number 50, going to church. 49, I'm going to church. 38, I'm going to church. 20, 21, I'm going to church. I don't, I don't know why I'm going backwards. Am I supposed to go back? Yeah, that's right. Because we're going to finally get to the last week of the year. And it says, I'm going to church. Wouldn't it be awesome? I guarantee you, you give us a year of your life, your life's going to change. You're going to start thinking differently. And when you start thinking differently, you're going to start getting different results. Come on, let's give God some praise that there's a way out of this thing. Uh, there's some commitments that you can make early in the year to prepare for a great year. Uh, this is what I, there's another thing I've learned that opportunity knocks on the door of the prepared. All I mean is this, is there, there's opportunity all around you, but the unprepared are blinded to it. It just passes them by. Those that are prepared, this is what they could do. They could take advantage of the prop opportunities. This next year, 2023, is going to be, of course, it's going to have challenges. We're going to have battles. It's part of life. They're going to have ups and you're going to have downs. But this is the truth. The prepared are going to come out of this year with growth, with victories, with, with breakthrough, with maturity. They're going to, they're going to, and, they're, and great opportunities are going to knock on their door. Knock on my door, Jesus. So now you're here. Great opportunity. You showed up every Sunday. We'll have an opportunity. Wednesday nights, we have opportunities. To, um, this week, our Holy Warriors classes start. Um, Tuesday, I'm going to be here. I only teach Holy Warriors once a year. I'm going to be here Tuesday. If you're free, come and join me. And I'm going to go through Holy Warriors with you. It's a growth class. And I guarantee you, by the end of four or five weeks, you have 10 years worth of growth. 
It's like boot camp. It's like spiritual boot camp. You do not want to miss it. That's going to be Tuesday. I'll be here. Get ready for Holy Warriors 1. I'd love to see you here. If you can't make it on Tuesday, on Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock next week, we'll launch that. Also, today at 1 o'clock in our, in our education building across the street, we're going to have leadership university orientation. If you want to get a leadership, if you want to get an associate's degree in leadership, you could actually start right now. A year from now is going to come, whether you're more prepared or not. All I'm saying, invest so you're ready for the responsibility that God wants to give you. And God is saying, I want to make you a leader. Come on, anybody could become a leader. You could be taught to be a leader. How many believe you could be taught to be a leader? So that's going to be at, that's going to be today at orientation. The classes start next week, okay? So love you guys. Let, let's start. Let's pray. And let's go ahead and study the Bible, which is the greatest book in the whole world. Father, I just thank you for everyone that's here. Everyone's here matters. They count. They're valuable. They're not an accident. They're not a mistake. They're, 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 you, they're, you already thought about them before they were ever born. You got a plan for their life. And part of that plan was them to be here and be exposed to your teachings, to your word. To start getting the results that you have for them. You want to give them forgiveness, eternal life, purpose. Empower them to, to fulfill the destiny that you have for them. So I ask you, Lord, as we're studying your word. Teach through me. We're ready to receive, learn, apply, and then teach others what we're learning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, we right now as a church, we have a, a book called the Daily Growth Book. How many got the Daily Growth Book already? Just raise your hand if you got it. Uh, we, we got 2,000 books. We sold out right away. Um, we just ordered another 500. And I don't know what's left. We might have sold out again. Uh, all I'm saying is we could get you the books. If there's some in the foyer, I would get them right away. Besides the Bible, this would be the most important book you'll ever have in your hand. It's going to teach you daily how to study the Word. It's going to show you how to set goals. It's not just a devotional. It's a daily planner and a goal-setting manual. It will keep you on track. The book opens up with 18 growth habits that you can commit yourself to. It's worth it just to know those growth habits. Now, good habits are developed. Say it with me. Good habits are... And so now if you want to develop good habits, you're going to have to know what they are and then you commit yourself to be disciplined so you could develop them. But if you develop good habits, this is what's going to happen. It's going to change your character. Now, when your character is changed and habits change your character, it be good, good decisions become second nature. Good decisions become what? That means you don't think about it. It's just... It's a habit. I just do it. And you could actually, we're created to be creatures of habit. That means whatever you consistently talk about, invest in, work on, this is what happens. It becomes, it becomes addictive and it changes your character. So you're going to learn that. You're going to set goals. Every day you're going to set, you're going to decide what is the most important thing I could get done. And you're going to write that thing out. And every day you're going to read scripture. This book will train you how to think. It will train you how to be successful. And this is what it's going to do. Renew your thinking so you can start getting different results. You don't have a problem. This is what you got. You got a thinking problem. Because your problem can be overcome when you start thinking different. Let me understand that. But nothing's going to happen until you make intentional mind. I must study the word and expose myself to God's mind so I can start getting God's results. So get that book. If they run out, just order it. And we'll have it here by next week. We got people from um, all over the country that are calling. It's just spreading. People are calling us in the office from out of state because someone here told them about it. And I talked to someone the other day. Oh, this was not the other day. Yesterday. I'm at the car wash. And I haven't been in that car wash for a long period of time. The guy that comes up to me, he goes, did you just write a book? I go, how would you know? He goes, I, I just saw it on Facebook or something like that. I go, sure did. Best book in the world. And I'm not saying it's the best book in the world because I wrote it. Because it, it doesn't have a, a lot of my, I mean, it has our, my structure of thinking there. 
but it's a structure to succeed. But I'm telling you, you get that book, and not only are your life, your life's going to be transformed, it'll make you a world changer. You can start changing people's lives because it'll show you how to coach people. How many already received that? Okay, so now we're going to talk about a simple subject, um, and, but it's, it's a subject that Jesus talked about. It's fasting. Say it with me, fasting. Jesus started his ministry at 30 years old. That means it was 30 years of preparation. When we see, as we read scripture, we see Jesus being born. And then we see another picture of Jesus at 12 years old. And we see him in church. And he was asking questions to the leaders and the religious teachers. And at 12 years old, the religious teachers were astounded by the questions he was asking, especially that he was 12 years old. Now, when you're interested in learning, how I know you're interested in learning is by the questions that you ask. So to be a, a learner, you have to be ready to ask some questions and get ready to get some answers. So Jesus, and then we, so he's 12 years old, he's asking these questions, but we don't hear from him again in Scripture until he's 30 years old. And at 30 years old, we start off with, with him going into, he's going into a wilderness and he's fasting for 40 days. This is before Jesus does any miracles. I'm not saying that maybe Jesus didn't do some miracles from 12 to 30 years old, but it's not recorded that he did any miracles. Not, it doesn't say that he cast out demons. It doesn't say that he turned, you know, he turned biscuits into gravy. I mean, it doesn't say anything. We don't know. But at 30 years old, he's ready to start his ministry. Some would say start. At the beginning of his ministry, the Spirit of God takes him into the wilderness to fight or be tempted by the devil. He's fasted for 40 days, and the Bible says that the devil came to him with the same temptation that he came to Adam with. Now, when God made Adam, he told him, you could eat of every tree in the garden, but I don't want you to eat of that one tree in the middle of the garden, because if you eat of that tree, you'll surely die. He was tempted, he, the, the devil tempted Eve, and she ate, and spiritually he was separated from God at that moment. Food caused him to fall. Now, the same temptation comes to Jesus. Jesus is hungry. Imagine fasting for 40 days with no food and no water. You should die. Jesus was at the end of himself, and this is what I've learned. It's dangerous when you're in a weak place. Have you ever felt in a weak place that, that you're you want a break, but it seems like all hell breaks loose when you're the weakest. I know when I get weak. You say, Pastor, when are you the weakest? I'm the weakest after great successes because I let my guard down. So I gotta be, I gotta be super aware that when I'm, when I, I'm not weak when I'm, when I'm going through a battle, I'm ready to fight, let's throw down. But I get weak when I finally accomplish something, and then I let my guard down. And at that point, if I'm not aware, I fall into a sin. Now, Jesus, 40 days in the wilderness, he's starving because he's fasting. Guess who shows up? Satan himself. And what does Satan fight against Jesus with? Ideas, thoughts. So when you think about the devil, don't think about a red dressed being with a forked tail and a, and, and, and a fork saying, ha, ha, ha. The devil doesn't come that way. He comes with tempting thoughts. That's there, and this is what he wants to do. He wants to give us temporary pleasure to steal our authority and, and, and cause us to experience long-term misery. Understand this. If sin wasn't fun, it wouldn't be tempting. But just because it's fun and it feels good doesn't mean you should be saying yes to it. You understand that? 
There's always a negotiation. So Satan was there and he, and he told Jesus, you're hungry, right? And he says, why don't you turn these stones that are around you into bread? All Satan was doing was creating an image and trying to tempt him with his desire for food. But Jesus responded, say it with me, Jesus responded, say it with me, Jesus responded, and he said this to Satan, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And what he meant by that is, right now, I am being, I'm, I'm feeding on the word of God. I say no to that temptation so I can say yes for the rest of my life in ministry. Now, I want you to understand this. When you say no to your flesh and you say no to demonic ideas, this is what you're doing, gaining authority in the spiritual realm. Someone say gain authority. So Satan doesn't want you to eat bread. Satan wants to rule over you. And what he does, he rules us with our lower nature. Be careful that you're not looking at people as your standard because I don't care what society is doing, just because they're doing it, it and everybody's doing it, it doesn't make it right. And if it's not right, it will not produce victory. It will not produce breakthrough. It will not produce, come on, Christians that are deep. It will not produce anointing. You'll never be in authority. You'll always be a victim. And God is saying, we're going to start off this year the same way Jesus started this year. But we're not going to turn the loaves into bread. What we're going to do is say, nah, I'm going to live by the word of God these next 21 days. I'm choosing God over everything, including food. I've learned this. If you could say no to a Big Mac and an In-N-Out burger and a Twinkie and a cookie, you can start saying yes to God and saying no to lust and saying no to adultery and saying no to unworthiness and saying no to depression. I'm going to tell you this. You're going to start changing your life by saying yes to God and no to those lower ideas. God is saying, I'm going to train you to hear my voice. This is what's going to happen. At the beginning of the year, we're going to conquer every demon that's going to try to destroy your life and every thought that's been ruining your future. We're going to deal with it at the beginning of the year so you have victory all year long. Come on, give God some praise. Let's go do this. So what fasting does, it trains you to hear the voice of God and say yes. You're going to yes your way into your destiny. Fasting. What is fasting? A time that we are committing to abstain from food or some kind of food or drink for a spiritual purpose. So I'm fasting for a spiritual purpose. And fasting creates growth. The word growth means the act or process of developing, increasing, advancing, expanding, improving, succeeding, building, multiplying, maturing. Listen to those words. Are those words, are those words, are these words that you want to define your 2023? Expansion, maturity, increase, improving, succeeding, advancing, expanding, developing through a process. Through a what? Okay. If you want those words to be associated with you, that when people think about you, they think about increase, expanding, growth, maturity. Not immaturity, maturity. Not poverty. Come on. Expansion, Wealth, prosperity. Say, Pastor, don't say that word prosperity. Understand, God wants you to do better than you're doing right now. God's plan for your life is not for you to go backwards. I don't care what the economy is. That has nothing to do with you as a believer. Come on, let's apply God's principles and start getting some growth. Does anybody want some growth in your life? Aren't you tired of being a victim? Be careful that you don't have more faith in a lotto ticket than you do God. Well, I got to buy the lotto ticket. It's a billion dollars. And God says, don't you understand that I, 
it's better to know how to fish than someone give you a fish. I'm going to teach you how to be successful. I'm going to, come on, change your thinking, and then I'm going to make you a world changer. Does anybody want that in their life? So now, fast and abstain it from food for a spiritual purpose. Now, there's three areas of growth I want to talk to you that would happen through fasting. If you fast, expect these three areas to grow. Number one, grow in unity. God calls us to do a corporate fast to unify us. We as a church are fasting together. There's three types of fast. One is you could do a liquid fast that all you're doing is bring, drinking broth and juices and water. And you could do that. The second type of fast, a Daniel fast, no meat, no sweets, drink only water and juices, eat only fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts and seeds. You could do that for 21 days. A partial fast is still a fast, but you fast and from, let's say, you fast until 6 p.m., 4 p.m., and then you eat a light meal afterwards. So you can fast until 4. I'll fast till 4, and then I'll skip breakfast, I'll skip lunch, and I'll eat a light meal. Now, I, I've said this. If you're doing a partial fast, don't do this. Make up for every meal that you missed. Okay. Man, I, I miss breakfast. Come here to breakfast, bring me the lunch, and then bring me dinner too. Hallelujah. <laughs> Don't do that because this is what's going to happen. You're going to gain weight. <laughs> no, but that's not the purpose. You could eat a light meal. You should stay hungry the whole 21 days and learn how to say no to your lower nature. We're going to learn how to say no to our lower nature and say yes to our higher nature, which is God. How many are ready for that? You're going to start getting the results. So in Joel 1.14, it says this. Announce a time of fasting. God tells, God tells you all, announce a time of fasting. Call the people together. So this is not new. God has done this. For a solemn meeting. Bring the leaders and all the people to the land in the church, in the temple of the church of the Lord your God. And cry out to him there. He said, what I want you to do is call everybody together. And let's have a fast. And then what I want you to do as a group of people, start praying to me because I'm ready to give you what's in heaven here on earth. I'm ready to give you ideas. I'm ready to give you vision. I'm ready to give you victories. I'm ready to give you um, breakthroughs. But what I need is all of you unified because until there's unity, I won't show up. Now, that's why the devil has us all divided in America. Because he knows as long as there's a spirit of division, the spirit of God won't move. So we're divided by politics. We're divided by race. We're divided by, 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 by genders. We're divided. I mean, we're just divided all over the place. We're divided by hoods. What hood do you belong to? I belong south side. I'm, north side? Oh, let's, let's throw down right now. And what's, what it's doing is destroying destroying our families, destroying our future, destroying our marriages, destroying our children. Because understand this, as long as there's division, only Satan is ruling that atmosphere. So for God to invade a city, for God to invade a family, for God to invade your life, this is what has to happen. There must be unity like there is in heaven. And that's why the Lord's Prayer starts off with this. Uh, it says, our Father on in heaven, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth the way it is in heaven. What he's saying, in heaven there's no division. In heaven there's no fighting. In heaven, come on, in heaven there's no prejudice. In heaven there's none of that. And what God is saying, if you create the heavenly atmosphere here, I will invade your family. I will invade your church with my power, with my miracles, with my salvation. Come on, with everything that you need if you create the atmosphere. So what we're doing... As a church, early in the year, we just all get it on the same page. You do the fast that you can do, but let's all do it. And by the end of these 21 days, we're going to see major breakthrough. This is what God says about unity. God says that it is good when we are in unity. Say it with me. It's good. Unity creates an atmosphere of good. And in Psalms 133, 1, it says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. God's saying, it's so good when God's people are living together in unity. 
Why would anybody want to come to this church if we're fighting and bickering? Why would anybody want your marriage as a Christian if all you do is fight like cats and perros, dogs? We got to learn right now to forgive, let it go, and the goal isn't to be right. That's not the principal matter. The goal is to have some unity. And if we have unity, this is what God's saying, I will invade your space, and this is what's going to happen. I'll invade it with good. Now, that word good, mean, it's a Hebrew word, tob, and it means excellence, happiness, prosperity, wealth, and favor. How many want that in your life? How many want favor in your life? Um, we have done a lot of things in this church, um, but, and it's been total favor, breakthroughs, miracles, and this is the reason. We practice the principle of unity. First thing, I'm married to my wife for 33 years, and I do not do anything without her and me being unified. Because I will not break the principle of unity, because if I lose the principle of unity, I lose the favor, I lose the prosperity, I lose the breakthrough, I lose everything that is good in my life. So before I purchase something, I go, Lisa, what do you think? If she says, nah, I don't think so, I, I don't get it. For years, I'm going to give you an example. For years, I've been looking at a car called the Hellcat. I know a pastor shouldn't have no Hellcat, but I was thinking, I want one. And I show her the picture. I go, what do you think about this, baby? She goes, nah, I don't like it. All right. Okay, okay. And then next week. <laughs> Hellcat Challenger. How about this one, right? Two door. So now I show her, how about this one right here? She goes, nah. I go, okay. And then they came out with a wide body Hellcat. Like, it's a little more aggressive. Like, ah. More masculine. I go, how about, how about this one? She keeps saying, no, I want a Hellcat. But until she says yes, I'm not going to have one. Because I don't do anything without some unity. Well, I didn't give up. They came out with a Hellcat red eye. From 700 horsepower to 800 horsepower. Lisa said, what are you going to do with that? I go, burn rubber. I could just say, ah, smoke. It's a, it, like girls are thinking, like, what? why would he want that? It's just power. Right? And, I, and she says, no. So guess what? I don't got a Hellcat. I got Tesla. Because she agreed on that one. All I'm saying this church is where it's at, not because we're smart, not because, not because we're the most gifted people. This church is where it's at, and we're going to reach the world because we're practicing a principle of unity. And if we're unified, God gives us a promise. Look at this promise. When you are united, nothing, when we are united, nothing we set out to do will be impossible. How many like that promise? When we are united, understand this, we as a church united, there's no vision that God can give us that we can't do. We united, there's nothing that God can give us that we can't do. And I don't care where we're at. We could be in a third world country. If there's some people of God that are corporately fasting and unified, God is saying there are no limits of what you can do because when you're unified, I will invade heaven. Come on. I will invade earth with everything that's in heaven. How many want some heaven on earth? This is how it happens. Unity. Someone say unity. I, I, check this out. I went to South Africa uh, a couple years back with my daughter, Allegra. And when I went to South Africa, there's a lot of poverty, massive poverty. When I, when I drove into the church I visited, I went to a church in South Africa. 
they had, they had security guards with machine guns at, at the gate. Every home has barbed wire fences, you know, 10, 13 feet high. Poverty is all over. Now, when I went to that church, I couldn't believe it. It was the most beautiful church I've ever seen. They had a church that reached in thousands, and they planted over 500 churches there in South Africa. They had a mall in their foyer with restaurants, boutiques. And I go, South Africa? I go, this is this right here? There's something weird about this. Let me go to another church. So I went to another church in South Africa. I, I should have got the pictures. This church was 10 times prettier than the last church. Now I want you to understand this. I've been to the biggest churches in America the most beautiful churches in America, and that church was way more beautiful, way more excellent than any church I've ever seen in America. Beautiful. They had an underground parking. Um, they had stadium seating with like six, 7,000 seats. Beautiful LED screens. Prosperity is all around them. And I go, God... This is like in a third world country. What's happening? He goes, they're not living according to the economy of South Africa. They're living according to the economy of heaven. And they're just unified. And if you'll get unified, it doesn't matter what city you're in. I'll prosper you right where you're at. Because when the conditions are right, there's an invasion of heaven. Come on, that's worth a clap. Come on, let's get some unity. How many believe that could happen? Look at the promise, Genesis eleven six. 6. This is what God said about unity. Look, there's God, he said. The people are united. The people are? And they speak the same language. This is what's happened in our church. We're united. We're speaking the same language. This is going to be a year of? Say it with me. It's going to be a year of growth. Let's say it with me. It's going to be a year of? Okay. He says the people are speaking the same language, they're united. Look at this. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. After they're unified, nothing will be impossible for them. I think sometimes the world gets this principle before the church gets it. When man made up their minds to go to the moon unified, you know what happened? They got to the moon. When man got together and they said, let's go to Mars, we're visiting Mars now. How does that happen? God is saying that nothing's impossible when there's unity. So could it be that we're struggling, not, not because you're not smart enough, not because you're not gifted enough, not because you don't have enough resources. Could it be you're struggling because there's this unity in your relationships? And God is saying it's not worth the fight. Forgive her. Forgive him, forgive your mama and your daddy too, get rid of it, forgive your boss, forgive your neighbor, stop letting them mess up your future and mess up your atmosphere. And I'm done from this moment on, I'm done with the past, I'm done with the hurt, and I'm choosing to let it go, and I'm going to have unity and peace in my spirit because I'm going to create an atmosphere for God to invade, and I'm going to start seeing the impossible happen in my life. I'm ready for some miracles. Come on, I'm ready for my family to get saved. I'm ready for God to expand me. I'm ready for our church to expand. I just need to create the atmosphere of unity. How many believe that? Now, number two, fasting will cause growing unity. Number two, fasting will cause us to grow in faith and authority over the devil. In Matthew 17, 18, it says this, and Jesus rebuked the demon. What did Jesus do? And it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Let me give you a background. This man has a son that's demon-possessed, and he's so demon-possessed 
that the, 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 the kid goes into convulsions, and then the demon takes over and throws him into the fire and the water. So the spirit is so strong that it's constantly trying to get that kid to commit suicide. Now what's happening, it's so out of control that the father doesn't know what to do. So he, he says, this is what I'm going to do. I heard that Jesus is casting out demons. So let me go ahead and bring my son to the disciples of Jesus so they can set my son free. So the disciples have this demon-possessed little boy or boy in front of them. And the kid's probably convulsing and head spinning, all kinds of crazy stuff, spitting. And, and they, this is what they do. They say to the demon, come out! And nothing happens. So maybe Peter says, guys, let's all do it in unity. Let's say come out together. One, two, three. Come out! And nothing happens. Then maybe Peter says this, why don't we do it like three times? Come out, come out, come out. Let's do that. Come out! Come out! Come out! Huh? Nothing happens. So now, the father's saying, you guys can't cast the demon out. Where's your boss at? So this is what happens. They bring the same condition to Jesus. Jesus doesn't say anything the disciples didn't say. But Jesus somehow has more authority. And the demon listens to him and leaves the boy. Same condition, different authority. Same condition, different faith. And when you have a different authority and a different or deeper level of faith, you start getting different results. You guys understand that? So now the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast out the demon? Like, I just saw you do that. We were trying to do that, but we couldn't. So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. And nothing will be impossible for you. And nothing will be impossible for you. However, however, this kind of demon does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Some of the things that you're dealing with, a psychiatrist can't help you. Some of the things that you're dealing with, your money can't solve. Some of the cycles that you're in will not be overcome by your willpower. Some of the things that you're going through, the depressions, the cycles, the self-destructive ideas that you're doing, the curses that you're seeing, the struggles in your family, your kids, many of those things are plain demonic. And until you get in a position spiritually to deal with those demons, they're going to stay and mock you. But God is saying there's some demons that won't come out until you get a position by prayer and fasting. He goes, if you could now get in a position to be submitted to me and spend time with me and dedicate yourself to me through prayer and fasting, I'm going to give you greater faith and I will give you greater authority that when you speak, your words will be empowered by me and demons will begin to listen to you. Come on, are you ready, come on, to get demons out of your life and out of your family and out of your hood? I remember I went to Las Vegas. And, Pastor, what are you doing in Las Vegas? I know your business. What are we doing in Las Vegas? Stay in Las Vegas. Someone gave me a timeshare in Las Vegas. And I, that night when I, when I got there, craziest thing happened. A demon came to me in my room. I saw the demon. Ugly demon. So how do he look like, Mark Pastor? Tell me. <laughs> this way he looked like very muscular. Very muscular. Um, had tattoos like was a, like a gang banger, but yet had female parts. Like woman, man, it was just like crazy. Right? So, so 
I looked at it. The demon told me, what are you doing here? Like, why are you asking me what I'm doing here? I'll tell you why he was asking me what I'm doing here. Because he knew someone that walks great authority just came in to the boundaries of the city that they have on lockdown. This is what I want you to do. When you begin to pray and you begin to fast, you start becoming famous in hell. They start knowing who you are. And when they start knowing who you are, this is what happens. You start gaining authority. That demon was recognized and someone just came into the territory that could transform cities. God is saying that same anointing that was on Jesus is available to you if you'll just do what Jesus did. Jesus prayed. Jesus fasted. And God is saying if you'll just submit to me and you're praying fast, I'm going to empower your declarations and I'm going to empower your confessions. I'm going to empower your words and they will begin to carry, carry greater weight in the spiritual realm. So how do you cast out demons? Same way Jesus did it. I've done it my, most of my life. You say this. Come out. And then I've seen this happen over and over. Demons react. Ah! Why? When, I, when that first happened to me, I was like, wow. That's powerful. Come out! Ah! Just words. That's how you defeat demons. But understand, you cannot defeat a demon when you're submitted to a demon. So when the devil's giving you porn, he doesn't want your sight, he wants your authority. He goes, I defeated you in a secret place, and now you're dealing with spiritual things, and you want to cast out a demon, but you're submitted to the spirit of porn. Oh, it's getting quiet right now. How many understand that? Come on. There's no way that you're watching porn for three hours, four hours every day, and all of a sudden you feel like a spiritual giant. It steals your confidence. It steals, come on, it messes up your mindset. It degrades you. It makes you feel shameful. And God is saying, we're done with that. We're going to start a fast here. You're going to submit to me. And then you're going to resist the devil. And he's going to flee from you. Give God some praise that God's saying, I'm going to give you my authority. But you must be submitted to my authority. And last thing. We're going to grow in hearing the voice of God. Fasting tunes us in to hearing the voice of God. When we fast, God speaks. When we, say, when we fast, what? All heaven responds and goes to war when just one man or woman decides that he wants to hear from God more than anything, including food. In Daniel 10, 2 and 3, it says, when, when the vi this vision came to me, Daniel is saying, I got a vision from God. I heard from God. I, Daniel, had been mourning for three weeks. Someone say three weeks. That sounds like 21 days. All that time I had eaten no rich food. That sounds like a fast. Meat and wine crossed my lips. I used no fragrant lotions until the three weeks had passed. Verse 12 of Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. Then he said, an angel came. Say it with me, an angel came. And he said, Daniel, don't be afraid. Since the first day you began to pray, remember praying and fasting for understanding and to humble yourself before God, your request has been heard in heaven. I have come and answered to your prayer while he was fasting. He said, the moment you began to pray and fast, heaven saw it and I began, this is what heaven started doing, started sending down angels to give you a message. This is what happened. But for 21 days, the spirit of the prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now I, am, now I am here to explain what will happen. I'm going to explain what will happen to your people in the future. For this vision concerns the time to come. This is what happens after he prayed for 21 days. Why did he fast for 21 days? He was going to fast until he heard from God. The 21st day, the angel finally came with, came with the message and began to give him a picture of his future. 
Because once you get a word from God, you could go through whatever hell you need to go through. You already know, I'm going to get through this because I already got a word from God. Hearing from God is the greatest asset that you could ever have. I already know when I hear from God how it's going to turn out. I don't care how it looks right now. I don't care if there's bad reports. It doesn't matter what the economy is. It doesn't matter what she's saying or he's saying. I already got a word from God. And if I got a word from God, God's word will not return empty. It will accomplish everything he set it out to do. Now, I remember praying one time. I'm going to end it with this. And I was praying because I don't know if you've ever, I'm sure you have. You got to the point that you're su in such a big battle, you've lost your energy physically. And all, almost you lost your will to keep on fighting. Have you ever been there? This happened to me. It hasn't happened a lot, but it happened this time. Because I'm a fighter. But it's, it's like this. If you keep getting hit and hit and hit and hit in the same area, it'll make you dizzy. It'll make you weak. And I remember, and I've shared this before, but my daughter, Abriana, which is my oldest daughter that now is pastoring with Gabriel, my son-in-law, La La Puente Church. At four years old, she came down with cancer. Lisa was nine months pregnant, eight months pregnant, nine months pregnant with my second daughter. I, only, I have one daughter. She's in the hospital, Loma Linda, with cancer. And every day is one bad report after another bad report. It's just one wave after another wave. There wasn't, in, there wasn't a good report. I, they never told me that she's getting better, right? So I'm fighting and, and, and I'm fighting and, and doing everything I can, memorizing scripture, confessing it, fighting. Lisa, while we're in the hospital, gives, goes into labor while I'm a Taco Bell. That's crazy. I'm a Taco Bell. She's going to labor. I thought this one was going to be a long labor. I'll give, you, I'll give you a break. I'll go talk about it. I'll come right back. My other daughter has cancer. I need some Taco Bell. So I leave, but when I come back, I go to the room. Lisa's not in that room. It says we had to do an emergency C-section. The baby's not doing well. So I run to where... They're doing this operation, emergency operation on Lisa. I get there, and the doors fling open, and the baby is on a table, and they're rushing her to NICU. So they're rushing her. I want you to understand. I got one baby that has cancer, and I got another baby that's going to NICU. And they, so I, I said, what's wrong? I see a whole bunch of doctors around the baby just trying to keep the baby alive. And then they said... The baby has a bad heart, and if we don't do surgery on her within 24 hours, she's going to die. I'm going to hit, it looks like both daughters are going to die. I'm living for God. There's a lot of thoughts that will come at you at that time, and if you're not aware, you could fall for the deception and be defeated, not by the circumstance, but be defeated by the thought you're accepting. I was careful what I said at that time because I don't want to give life to the wrong idea. Because I could have easily been defeated by saying this, why me? I'm serving you. I'm pastoring. I'm doing what you got, you called me to do. And you give me these two babies, what are you going to do? Take them away from me? Understand that. I could have went there. So I just kept my mouth shut. I went home by myself. This is when the hospital, the baby's in the hospital. I was running out of strength. And I went home, and I went upstairs. The house is empty. That's where my bedroom was. And I kneeled down by the bed. I didn't feel like praying, but that's the only thing I knew I could do. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. I give you my daughters, and I put them in your hands. Because there's no better hands I could put them in. Amen. I did that. Understand this. I didn't feel any better. But I did what I could do, pray. Craziest thing, never happened to me before. There were some people in L.A. that heard about my circumstance. In L.A., a team of ladies that was praying 
somehow my name got into their prayer group. I don't even know who they were. And they called, as they got, they got my mother's phone number, and they called her and said, we have a word for your son. They said, we were praying, and God told us, why is your son worried? Did he not put his daughters in my hands? So the very words that I prayed came back to me in confirmation. And I'll tell you this, it doesn't matter what you're going through. If you could just get one word from God, you'll know it's going to be okay. It's going to be all right. And I remember as soon as I got that, I go, baby, it's all going to be fine. We got a word from God. God's going to take care of our babies. Both daughters are living. They're doing ministry. They're doing what God called them to do. Just one word from God can change your destiny, change your faith, change your attitude. Come on, this is what God is saying. If you're fast, I'll speak. It's going to be okay. And maybe that's a word for you. I got it. Now this year, guys, I love you guys. and As a pastor, I get the weight of the congregation because we're going somewhere. But we need every one of you. Even if you came today. We're a team that God works together to reach people that look unreachable, including your own kids, your husband, your wife, your, your cuckoo family. So you might say, man, why God bring me this family? Man, my family, crazy. But that's why you're there. Because he needs someone crazy to reach somebody crazy. Come on. How many are saying that? It's going to be okay. But if God could reach you, he could reach them. And what we're doing, and if you're just joining a fast today, you say, Pastor, I don't want to join today. Can I join tomorrow? Because I want to just have one last meal. Cool. Start tomorrow. And even if you mess up, just keep starting over. But don't give up. Pray. I'll get, the, get the book, daily growth book. Read it. It's going to change your life forever and develop a right mindset to start receiving everything God has for you. But what we're going to do in this next 90 seconds is give you an opportunity to commit your life and declare your faith in Jesus Christ. So you can receive the greatest gift of all, the gift of forgiveness and eternal life. How you come to Jesus is the way you are. You come with your pain, your addiction, your struggles, your failures, and then God forgives you, sets you free, and empowers you to live a new life. That's called being born again. There's only two groups of people in this room. Those that have placed their faith in Jesus and are saved and have eternal life. And there are those that are still struggling. Um, you're, you're fighting through life, but you feel like you're all alone. And God says, I see you. It hurts me to see that struggle. And I see the hopelessness. Will you allow me to save you? restore you, rescue you, help you, empower you, and give you a new life. That can happen. You're one decision away. For the next 90 seconds, give us this time for 90 seconds, and we're going to give you an opportunity to say yes to Jesus Christ as he's knocking on your heart's door. And then we're going to fast together, and this year is going to be the greatest year of growth in your life. Christian, could you go ahead and close this out real quick? Oh, yeah. Man. I'm going to receive that word this morning. Before anybody else leaves, I want to kindly ask that we remain in our seats for this moment. You know, as Pastor Marco mentioned, you know, this is a, it's a brand new year. This is a brand new opportunity to really give God our everything. And I just want to say this. If you're coming to the church for the first time or whether you're coming back in a while, I want to say this to you. Welcome home. It's a place where you can grow in your walk with God and get discipled and get cared for. Give God your year. Give God your entire year and watch what he does in your life. You know, the Bible says, and we know this to be true, that all have fallen short of the glory of God. Just nod your head if you know you've made mistakes in your life. I'm nodding too. I know I have. The Bible also says that the wages or the price for our sin or our wrongdoing is death. Which means that the penalty we face 
because the wrong we've done means to be eternally separated from God forever. So does that mean that if I sin one time, then my destination is death? Yes. But because God loved you so much and he loves you in this moment right now, because he loves you so much, he was willing to give his son to take your place and pay the price for you. Something you didn't deserve, you and I did not deserve for a perfect Jesus to come and take the place of, of an imperfect person. But he did it because he loves you. Jesus loves you that much. There's no greater love. So Jesus paid the price for your, for your and I's sin. Washed it away completely. And now the question is, how can I be saved? Do I have to leave and fix my life and come back? Do I have to try and be a perfect person and then present myself to God? No, we can't. And we know that doesn't work because as hard as we try, we just can't seem to get it right or get it perfect. How do I respond then? What's my hope? The hope is this. Put your faith in Jesus. Put your faith in the sacrifice that he made for you on the cross. Make him your Lord today. And repent of your sins, which means to change your mind. Turn around. Turn from the life you've been living. Leave it at the altar. Give it to God and let God give you a brand new heart, a brand new mind, and a brand new future in Jesus' name. He can do that today. And today is your day. This is no accident you're here in this room today. So I want to ask you, if that's you, if you feel like the words that have been spoken up here today have been directed to you, it's because God loves you and he's been knocking at your heart this whole time. And you're saying today I want to give my life to Jesus, that if I died today, I want to know that I would spend eternity in heaven with the Father forever. I want to know that I'd be forgiven of my sins right now and receive salvation. If that's you, I'm going to count to three. I don't want you to just raise up your hand from the front row all the way to the back. Raise your hand if you're saying, that's me. I want to give my life to Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. I see all those hands. I see all those hands. I see your hands right there. I see your hands over here. I see your hands. I see your hands. We see your hands. We see you. Anybody over here? We see your hands. We see you. We see you over here. Anybody else? We see your hands. We see your hands in the back. Come on, can we give them a round of applause, all those that raised their hands today? Let's all stand to our feet in this moment. And I want to ask you one more thing. For those that raise your hands, do one more bold thing. Would you give us the honor and the privilege of praying with you and congratulating you this morning? Would you make your way out of your seat and come forward and we're going to pray with you? We're going to clap. Come on, church. That's right now is the time we get excited. We clap. We encourage them. Our brothers and sisters that are making a decision to follow Jesus, if you raise your hand, come forward to the front. Just kindly make your way out of your seat. Come forward, and we're going to pray with you. Come on, church. Let's get excited in this moment for all those that are making a decision to follow Jesus today. This is a big moment, church. They're still coming. Maybe ask somebody next to you, say, if you want to go up there, I'm willing to go up there with you. If you came with a friend or just check in with somebody. If you're saying you want to go up, I'll go up with you. to do we're gonna close now for all those that came up here just look at me for a moment everybody that just came up look at me for a second we have we're gonna help you in this walk we have a class that's launching called holy warriors say that with me say holy warriors what is holy warriors it's a class to equip you to disciple you and train you and we're gonna be with you the entire step of the way we're gonna show you how to live for God that class is launching this Tuesday and Pastor Marco is gonna be teaching this wave. If you can't make Tuesday nights, you can come next Sunday morning at 9 a.m. We have another session at 9 a.m. on Sundays. The person in front of you, they're gonna pray with you and they're gonna help you get signed up for that class. But are we ready? Are we ready for the best year we've ever had in our life? Are we ready to change? Are we ready to grow? Let's do it. I want everyone to bow your heads. They're still coming forward. Let's give them a round of applause. We're proud of you guys. You're still coming up. Let's pray. Let's all bow our heads and let's close our eyes. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, 
thank you for dying on the cross and raising from the dead so I can be saved. Forgive me for all my sin. I admit that I've done wrong. So I receive your forgiveness. Fill me now with your Holy Spirit. Set me free from my old ways. I change my mind and I turn to you. I give you everything. From this moment forward, my life will never be the same because my life is in your hands. Thank you for saving me and setting me free. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Give me God one more shout of praise for all he's done. Church, just so you know, we have a midweek service on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Pastor Marco is, I believe, uh, or we're gonna have a word this Wednesday. It's gonna be powerful. You don't wanna miss it. And Holy Warriors is this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pastor Marco is going to be teaching that class. We got some more announcements for you. If you want to stick around and watch them on the screen, you can do so. Otherwise, if you need prayer, come on up. Or if you'd like to meet one of the pastors, you can come up. We'd love to connect with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday. Go ahead and take a look at this video.